Digital Loop Season 4, Episode 1. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Paul. Great to be back here on the Digital Loop. And yeah, season, season four. Yes, yeah, season four, man. We reached season four. Then a lot of TV shows reach season four, but we have. So we announced last year, last year. See, I'm thinking like a TV show now. <laughs> we announced last episode that we were uh, changing slightly the format. So it's gonna be a bit the same and a bit different. The reason it's gonna be different, and now we're gonna anchor what we say cl more closely to what happens currently to current affairs. Uh, so whether it's a big story where there are many stories, depending on the size of the story, we'll sometimes pick one story and augment it with our opinions, with some background on it. Sometimes it'll be two stories, like today we'll have, sometimes it might even be three. The point is to actually anchor again what we say in what happens currently, but also kind of expand it beyond, so to make, to put it a little bit of context. Right. Uh, do you agree with that, Ivan? <laughs> I totally agree, and I really look forward to, to, to this new experience, this new format. I am sure that you're going to enjoy it, and, uh, well, let's start. Yeah, do not do not hesitate to give us feedback. As usual, you can find all the ways to do feedback on the digitalloop.co, otherwise on the Facebook page uh, slash the digitalloop.co, and, of course, on uh, Twitter at the digital loop these are our main channels we cannot not being very active on google plus anymore <laughs> uh but that's a story for another day so the two stories we picked up this week uh the first one is a bit is current was well, not being that current because it's been going on forever uh is, is there a bubble or not uh so for those who don't know what a bubble is besides being something you do with a chewing gum and making it explode uh the in uh very early tw uh, 2000s you know, there was a lot of activity around startups, a lot of funding around startups, and that bloated and bloated and bloated until suddenly everything collapsed, and a lot of startups, of course, disappeared, and everybody called that dot-com a crash. And nowadays, there are questions whether or not we are again in the same state. This, these kind of stories have been going on for almost a year, even more for the, depending on who you read. They've been more active recently in the past few months. Uh, so here we're not experts and we're not going to tell you about exactly whether or not is a bubble but i want to ask ivan uh whether he thinks it's important or not whether he think it, there's maybe a bubble or not because we're seeing you know the major valuations we're seeing uber we've been talking a lot about this show being valued at the extremely uh, immense amount of money we're seeing airbnb we're seeing these type of companies being so important and some people are starting to think is it too much Ivan, any opinion on this? Uh, I think that, I mean, I, I, I believe that this is, we are not in a bubble yet, regardless, you know, what's a bubble again. But uh, I think that what's happening is, the, the main difference between what's happening today and what happened in the past is that most of these huge uh, unicorns or these companies that are extremely highly valued, they actually add value. They actually are really, really, really uh, valuable services and they are having an impact on people's lives. Uh, I have the impression that in the past, at least when we're talking about the year 2000s, many of these um, uh, highly valued companies were highly valued mostly based on hype and not really on, on the value that they actually provided to consumers. So I think that's a big difference. When we're talking about Uber, we're talking about Airbnb, we're talking about all these huge, huge, huge uh, unicorns, which is a term that I hate to use, but let's call it what everybody calls them. Uh, I think that's that's it. You know, there are, there, are, there are people that believe that these companies could be valued even higher. Uh, yes. Mark, An Mark Andresen uh, uh, recently, um, uh, in, in an article in Fortune, he mentioned that well, he doesn't think that we're in a, in a tech bubble. He thinks that we are actually in a bust. Uh, and he believes that actually those uh, winners among these new unicorns, they should be valued much, much higher. Um, so, so I think that's a big difference about this. Yeah, having had a, an experienced startup uh, when I was in 1999 to 2001, uh, so right at everything that changed, uh, it's true that one of the major differences is that back then there was not that many people online simply, so who were trying to sell stuff to a very limited subset of the population. Nowadays, this number has grown. Nowadays, you can reach customers all around the world, thankful to, you know, of course, the social networks and others, other tools as well. Uh, so that, that's that's the first thing. I mean, 
it's incomparable because of that, because now you have so many people that can be read, so many people that use your services that making the exact comparison of uh, what happened um, now 15 years ago is, is a bit silly. Uh, I don't have any opinion, any like firm opinion of whether it's a bubble or not. I would say that uh, if you look at just the numbers, for instance, if you look at purely the US, if you look at the funding in comparison to uh, the GDP, we're still lower than what happened last time. Uh, also, of course, the funding as a percentage of people online, the same thing, the price to earning ratio, I don't want to bore people with that, but also shows that all the metrics that we usually use are lower than last time. The other thing is probably that uh, people have to also kind of, there might be not a bubble, but there might be, of course, the markets are, are not very, doing very well. The world, the world economy is, doing, is not doing that well. So it's true that when the world economy is not doing that well compared with the few bright spots in the Silicon Valley, there seems to be like a, oh, wow, these guys are bright stars and the rest is kind of stagnating. So that also kind of augments this narrative of, oh, this cannot be true. This is a dream. Whether or not, if, for instance, the world economy starts to crash uh, in the next coming month or years, that will drive down those, maybe. And we've seen that Fidelity, so Fidelity is a, is a very big fund in the US. They've already said that, you know, companies like Snapchat were probably valued way too high. They've already they started cutting. So the thing is, people have to remember it's humans. You know, even the markets are not still computers. So if a lot of humans decide that we are in a, a problematic economy, then suddenly they stop invest, investing. And then suddenly, of course, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. The fact that we said there was a bubble suddenly creates a bubble. And it's not as easy as that. But the point is that, and that's my main point, does it really matter? Of course, it matters if you've invested money, Ivan, because yeah. you're like, oh, damn it, I'm going to lose my money. and that's But that's a risk of the market. Uh, now, if you look at last time, there are companies like Amazon uh, that not only survived, but now are thriving. Uh, you have companies like eBay. The, uh, eBay was born in 95. It's still around. It's not doing that great, to be honest, but it's still around uh, more than 20 years ago. You have companies that were born just after the uh, the old crash. There were PayPal. There was uh, um, Google uh, as well. Uh, Salesforce. All these companies. So does it really matter? I'm not that sure. I don't know if you agree with me. I totally agree. I mean, uh, and and uh, I mean, this is something that has been mentioned in the past that many of the biggest companies from the 20th century came were built after the the, the, the big depression. Uh, same thing Correct. about what you mentioned now. What's happening now? Uh, all this influx of innovation and all this influx of new trends that are happening happen for a reason. You know, uh, Jeremiah Ouyang very very openly talks about you know how this uh, collaborative economy. Uh, um, grew really quickly because of the crisis of 2008. So, you know, all these elements are are, are, are having a big impact on, on on how the markets move. But again, as you mentioned before, it's, it's people. It's people making the decisions. And uh, yes, in my opinion, there are many companies that are way, way, way overvalued. But I assume that the people giving those valuations know a thing or two more than I do about them. So, uh, <laughs> of course, we can all of us have our opinions and say, well, this is crazy. That's way over value. Or we can say, well, actually, that's way value much more than that. At the end of the day, if the, if the companies, if the services are adding value, uh, you know, chances are that they're going to be able to continue moving. If it's just hype, and it's just a useless thing that allows people to do the same thing just with a little different, you know, format or font or colors. Chances are that they're going to go down. Yeah, and like you said, I mean, there's a, it's never been as easy to put an ID to life, and it's never been as easy to scale that ID all around the world. So, simply maybe it's a new reality as well. Like you, you know, we mentioned Uber. Uber is scaling up to all these countries. We. I mean, we're not profits. Maybe Uber will end up having issues at some point. But right now, they have this kind of uh, winner-takes-it-all attitude, and uh, they might actually be valued the reason they value it. We'll see. But and, and, and also, I just wanted to add one thing, because you mentioned the, the, fr the, the phrase around the world, which I think that is also a very important element. You know, we're talking about, of course, most of the big uh, unicorns, again, uh, they are they are from the US and they are most of them are actually based in Silicon Valley. But if you think about it, there is a lot of great innovation, a lot of great companies growing up 
all over the world. And, um, and today, as you mentioned, it's easier than ever to start a corporation, start a company, you know, in, in, in Europe, in Asia, uh, in Latin America, there is a lot of really, really exciting stuff happening. So it, there is not this dependency just on what's happening in the US and then the entire world just watching and waiting to see. Um, today, players in Europe can have a, a huge impact in the economy. And I think that that's also what levels the, the 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 situation in the market that we are not just waiting for one you know somebody to screw up in the in in, in California for the entire thing to collapse which may happen in 2008 and and, and Wall Street um, I think yeah. we're in a different situation yeah and one number since you mentioned around the world because you're right to have corrected me there's and we've been covering a lot of other markets in our past episodes. I think uh, Alibaba did a single day of sales of almost $10 billion. It shows you the scale. Of course, it's the scale of China, but just simply because suddenly a lot of people are online, well, they're able to do these kind of numbers. Anyway, this might be a story we'll revisit, uh, maybe because a crash will happen like tomorrow and we'll have to revisit it. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? <laughs> but it's, it's always interesting. I mean, it, uh, because I think that a lot of people, of course, if you live in a microcosm of startups, you want to know because you need to know, is it easy to be, get funded or not? Uh, right now, there's a lot of money available. It's true that if that might change in the future. But I think that... Uh, for the for the moment, at least, there doesn't seem like to be a lot of signs of having more difficulties to find money. And I know it's very easy to say when you're an early stage startup in the middle of nowhere, you always find it hard. But uh, compared to what it used to be, it's much easier. Anyway, moving on to the second story. The second story is a bit linked to what we said because it's obviously everything is a bit linked to this vast interconnected world. It's the Different stories between Facebook and Twitter. So you back up again, let's say, to 2008, 2009, and they were like these two young upstart social networks talking about oh, taking over the world. And we look at 2015, and the story is, at least the narrative, is not the same. So some people are even saying that Twitter might be dead soon. Uh, I don't know if it's over, an overstatement or not. What do you think? Um, I think that. Um Twitter, the difference between Facebook and Twitter is that Facebook, since the beginning, has been developed and run as a business. I think that uh, uh, f um, Mark Zuckerberg was very smart enough early on to, to get involved and to get connected with really, really, really smart and, and really um, knowledgeable people about that knew had experience developing developing a large large uh, company. Um, I have the impression that the the great move that that Facebook has been doing for the last five six years is that they are being able to scale appropriately to their uh, their their expectations of the of the audience, the expectations of everybody that is subscribed to Facebook, and the expectations of the shareholders and of the of the uh, the market. Um, they have made some moves that get people scratching their heads, but later on we find out that actually was a great move. You know, I remember when when they bought uh, Instagram for one billion dollars. Everybody was everybody thought that they were crazy, and now in retrospective, there's a lot of people that believe that that was you know a, 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 an amazing deal that today Instagram will be worth I don't know five times more. So uh, I think that is that since the beginning they had a very very uh, solid strategic approach to developing a, a sustainable scalable business twitter on the other hand i, I have the impression that it has been uh, you know the, the history of twitter has been developed a lot on based on on, on uh, problems uh, you know arguments uh, lack of focus lack of vision different focus different decisions they some founders want to go that direction the other founders wants to go there the ceo all of a sudden comes up with something different uh, there is disagreements there is no you know culture going in one direction and as a result you see that you know it, it, this is you know an accident waiting to happen you know there the, the now uh, jack dorsey is on the ceo everybody's expecting that he's going to arrive and save everything just with one move i don't think that he's going to be able to do that uh just like like this i don't know there is a lot of things happening and then they make a lot of decisions that 
you know, like recently they removed the, the tweet account number. So, so now, for example, if you're a blogger, you cannot see how many people have shared that, that tweet, which it doesn't make any sense. And, and I'm wondering if, if, you know, five months, six months, a year from now, we're going to go and say, well, that's a, well, that was a brilliant move. Actually, I don't think so. I think they are, they are going in the wrong direction. What do you think about it? Well, yeah, they've made uh, so just just a few numbers to put that in perspective. Uh, right now, Facebook has more than 1.5 billion people on it. Uh, it was, I think, during August for the first time, Mark Zuckerberg announced that there was uh, in a single day one billion people connected on Facebook. So it was the very first time. So that's you know, of course, it makes people, uh, especially investors and markets, very happy. The advertising also revenue is going increasingly high, so they're making actually a lot of money. I remember people were criticizing a bit when um, uh, Facebook went uh, on public, so it's IPO, they were like, oh, it's overpriced. And when you look now, you're like, well, you know, they're actually doing a lot of money. Uh, they've also uh, upped their game in video a lot to the point they are almost competing with YouTube nowadays. Uh, a simple example, to take any video surfaces, well, there's a new trailer of a movie that comes out. Uh, so, for instance, the big movie we're all waiting for, Star Wars, when well, the trailer was up, you could see the numbers because it went up simultaneously on Facebook and on YouTube. And you could see the numbers of view counts. And the number of view counts on, on Facebook was dramatically higher at the beginning. It kind of now evened out over time, meaning that there's a lot of very fast interaction on, 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 on Facebook. A lot of some people criticize how Facebook is actually implementing it. Fair enough, by the way. Uh, so there is a, a lot of news mix happy. You mentioned Instagram. Instagram has, I think, what, 400 million users. They also introduce ads. Now, ads, because I run ads on Facebook, I can simultaneously run ads on Instagram from the face, the same. Facebook dashboard, meaning they have a business model. For Twitter on the other side, like you probably said as well, is that they've been doing back and forth. They're like, what are we really as a company? Are we the water cooler of the world? Are we a tool for journalists? Are we a tool to watch uh, live interaction with, for instance, TV events and major events in the world? But they've tried with the World Cup and other events. They've been a little bit of not being sure what they are, which, by the way, it's hard, by the way. I'm not criticizing them. But the, the, the reality is that the latest earnings, they've said that the monthly active users sits at 320 um, a million, I think. So compared to Facebook, again, if you look at where they started, they're not growing, which is why uh, investors on the stock market are, are basically uh, punishing them because they say, what are you doing? And similar thing happens, of course, with advertising and says, well, your revenues are not that great. So. I know it's a bit harsh, but let's come back to the point we were talking about the earlier, is there a bubble or not? At the end of the day, you have to make money to survive. It's one thing to take a lot of funding, but you have to make a lot of money to survive. So will Twitter survive? I mean, you can see that Twitter has gone more and more into Facebook territory. They started like introducing some kind of algorithm, meaning that instead of just seeing the timeline, sometimes when you log in, you see what you have missed. So they push stories that used to be buried, they push them back up. They've also removed the star and that put a heart. So you, you like actually a story. They've embedded videos. So videos for users like you and me, Ivan, are limited to 30 seconds. But if you're a brand, you can actually have much longer videos. So video watching is there as well. So they, you can feel that they are pushing that way. Uh, I don't know. Maybe also the people have changed. Maybe we're a bit more cautious about we say what we say online. As in on Facebook, you can control it. You can say, I just want to say something to... Ivan, uh, which, by the way, shows the, the skyrocketing of Facebook Messenger, which is almost like a different tool, like a, the creating different, Facebook is creating almost, you know, a platform on Messenger only. Uh, Twitter had that, that for a long time. They had a Twitter DM, so it seemingly they haven't done a lot without just removing the character count, but they haven't done a lot with it. So they are moving that way. We'll see. I mean, it's too early to call anything about Jack Dorsey, who was... He's back as a CEO. But uh, I mean, the sad part, to be honest, is very personal. I love Twitter. It's my favorite tool because I'm very text-based. I love the fastness of like, 
it's the first tool I check every time there's a you know breaking news. Like I want to know what people say. I want to know it's I cannot do that on Facebook as easily. And I can also meet like the most random people that I have never met because you can connect with people that are not your in your network. Whereas Facebook is more about you know your friends and your extended network, which you know it has its own dynamics that are interesting. But Twitter, I hope, really hope. That they find a way to survive this because it's it's a fantastic tool. Yeah, I totally agree, and I, it's funny because I, um, uh, as as uh, you know, I am based in Poland, and in Poland, Twitter is not popular. Twitter is is considered uh, a tool for politicians and for journalists, and that's about it. Uh, and of course, I am the one, you know, with the flag of I love Twitter, and I tell everybody about how <laughs> great this Twitter is, and everybody looks at me like an idiot. But but the reality is, as I totally agree with what you mentioned. I mean, the fact that uh, I think the difference is that if you get it. If you understand it, if you like it, Twitter is fantastic. If you don't understand it, you don't get it, what, why you need to be there? I'm you sorry to interrupt, Facebook. but I think that's one of the biggest problems they always have. They don't know how to explain what is Twitter because it's so hard to explain. It's once you get used to it, it's once you start talking with people, and once you start reading news and stuff, or especially tracking events that you understand its power. But when you open an account, you're there, now what? You know, so I follow a few celebrities, and know what? You know, there's this kind of uh, not an immediacy of understanding of what it is, and that's always been a problem for Twitter, the onboarding experience. Where Facebook is very easy. I'm going to connect with a family, which then becomes my friends, and at some point, for some people, becomes like everybody else. <laughs> it's there's a more it's more natural way of understanding. Okay. So I totally agree with you. It's hard to get on Twitter, and we've probably been lucky because. We've been on, on Twitter for quite a while, so not only we understand it, but we already have built some kind of network. So we already have conversations, whereas if you start today, it's much harder probably. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and also there is a big factor that Facebook, for a lot of people, it's their hub. I mean, uh, you yes, know, when you walk around the office... Internet, it's, yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing that they when you walk around an office and you will see a lot of people, a lot of stations with their computers. Chances are that they have open Facebook. You're right. And they're pretend, pretending they're working. And if they're working, okay, they're working, they're working. Every once in a while, they go back and they check Facebook. And and I see that phenomenon time and time <laughs> again. And it's 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 is the hub. That's where people. Uh, that's the, their place where they can you know get distracted. That's the place where they can connect with friends. That's the place where they can look at funny videos interesting enough as you mentioned youtube uh, i think that the, the the reason why there is a lot of more people watching videos on facebook is because people are already there yes. if you want to watch yes. a video on youtube you have to go to youtube but if you are already on facebook and then the videos just appear on your screen you're going to watch them so 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 yes i mean there is a lot a lot of very interesting interesting dynamics happening uh, and 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 i'm very curious to see what's going to happen now that uh, Twitter is changing their, their their strategy, their leadership. Uh, like you, I really hope that they get their act together because uh, I really enjoy that that uh, service, and I I really hope that they want to be able to to continue moving forward because we love Twitter. And on that, uh, we'll also continue moving forward. So we learn our lessons. Uh, this time, we're not saying every week uh, because <laughs> we both are traveling. We both have a lot of work. So it's going to be a bit like in season three. We'll be every two weeks or so, sometimes more close to each other, sometimes depending on the workload, of course, holidays a little bit less. But uh, we're, we're going to be active. We promise you that, especially with a breaking story. So see you next episode, Ivan. Absolutely. Have a great day, guys. And uh, see you around. Bye-bye.